Hi, I'm Jason Moore. I'm a professor at the University of Pennsylvania, and today I'm going to give a demo of the Interactive 6502 for the Atari home computers. You can find more of my Atari projects at atariprojects.org. The goal of this project is to allow the user to interact directly with the 6502 processor via a user-friendly graphical interface. The 6502 was developed by Chuck Peddle in the early 1970s when he worked for Motorola. And this was really one of the first inexpensive computer chips on the market. It sold for about $25 in 1975. And this led to the Cambrian explosion of home computers. In 1977, we saw the Commodore PET, the Apple II, the Radio Shack TRS-80 all released for, to the consumer. The Commodore and the Apple both used the 6502, while the Radio Shack used the competing Zilog Z80. I'm gonna focus today on the Atari home computers, which were released in 1979 and included a graphics processing unit a GPU which allowed advanced graphics for the time. So here's a summary overview of the 6502 processor from chapter three of the book Atari Roots. Uh, on the left here are shown all the various registers. We have the program counter which helps the CPU keep track of the next instruction that needs to be executed. A stack pointer which keeps track of memory addresses used by the CPU a process status register which uh, keeps track of the various states of the processor, the X and Y registers where we can store numbers, and the arithmetic uh, logic unit, the ALU, which allows um, simple addition and subtraction with numbers coming from the accumulator and uh, the data bus with the results going back and being stored in the accumulator. This is the 6502 instruction set. There are 56 instructions that we can use to tell the CPU what to do. I like this figure because they're organized according to the, the various parts of the 6502. And the instructions here are represented as assembly language uh, mnemonics, three letter mnemonics that um, indicate which instruction is to be used. We're gonna focus today on just a subset of the 56 instructions, specifically those that allow us to um, create and, and move numbers in and out of the various, the X register, the Y register, the system memory, uh, and the accumulator with uh, arithmetic, uh, including addition and subtraction. This is a screenshot of the interactive 6502, uh, which I'll give a demo of here in a minute. Uh, at the top are the assembly language commands, the instructions that we're going to be able to use uh, to interact directly with the 6502. Um, and at the bottom, um, shown uh, a memory location that we're going to keep track of uh, on page zero of the Atari memory. And then on the right are the register, three registers of the CPU that we're going to keep track of, the XY and the accumulator. The software for the Interactive 6502 was programmed in BASIC, specifically BASIC XL. Now, unfortunately, you can't interact directly with the 6502 processor from BASIC. You cannot manipulate the registers directly. And so what I've done here in this program is I've included some assembly language commands which actually manipulate the registers, and those assembly commands are then called from the BASIC program when you click on one of the instructions to be executed. The source code for the Interactive 6502 is available on my GitHub page, and I've got more details about the program on the Atari Projects website. Okay, we have the Altera Atari 8-bit emulator loaded here with Basic Excel, my programming language, and we have the um, interactive 6502 disk image loaded into drive one. Obviously, you would want to run this on real hardware to get the authentic 6502 experience, but we're going to use emulation for the purposes of the demo. Uh, we can see the contents of this disk, and we're going to load that basic file that has the program. And we're gonna run that, and that'll bring up the title screen. 
the program's doing some initialization and then it is ready to go. And here at the top, we have our assembly commands and we can scroll through them and select the ones we want to play with. Um, INC is, is increment that increments the contents of the memory location. So when I push that, we can see the memory, the RAM goes from zero to one, one to two, two to three, uh, et cetera. We can also increase the X and Y registers with similar commands. So this increases the X register and this one increases the Y register. Um, there's some other commands here. Um, LDA um, loads the contents of memory into um, the accumulator. So when I push that, the four will appear in the accumulator. We can also do the same with X and Y. Um, and we can subtract and add. SBC is a subtract function, so that's going to take the contents of the accumulator and subtract the contents of the memory location, which is passed to the ALU over the data bus uh, with the value from the accumulator. So four minus four is zero, and we can see the value of the accumulator drop to zero. Um, here's a command for um, storing what's in the accumulator and memory. So that'll transfer the zero across the data bus into memory. Uh, and you can see the zero appears in memory. There are also some transfer functions here to go from the accumulator to the X register, to go from the accumulator to the Y register, um, et cetera. So that's it. Um, <clears throat> it's really a, a very simple program, but is, is meant to give the user an authentic experience interacting with the 6502. And again, I would encourage you to try this on real hardware. Um, the last thing I want to show you is the, um, uh, an example bit of code to show you where the assembly language uh, routines are um, uh, loaded in. So here are the last three lines of the program. This is the assembly routine for the transfer Y to A assembly command. So in this remark statement, I have the actual assembly commands. The first three are for initialization. I bring in the value from memory that BASIC is keeping track of into the Y register. Um, it's stored in memory location 205. I can then transfer the contents of the Y register over to the accumulator with TYA. Then I wanna move that back to a memory location that BASIC keeps track of so I can draw the contents of the accumulator on the screen. And here's the actual decimal values for those assembly commands and the, you can see the memory locations in here. Um, and uh, we store these in memory um, and then can point BASIC to them to execute those assembly commands. All right, that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed the demo um, and please give it a try on real hardware. Thank you.